Welcome to the Built to Scale series, Outside Marketing, bringing you quick, actionable episodes to help move your business forward. Here's your host, Craig Severinsen. Good morning and welcome to episode eight. Get that three in there, eight of Outside Marketing. I'm Craig Severinsen and this is the show where we talk about how do you build a thriving business without sacrificing your personal life? And today we're going to talk about how does culture hurt or help your sales? So I'm talking about your business culture. Even if you're a solopreneur, if you're all by yourself, there is a company culture. And how does that affect, hurt, or help your sales process? If you like this content, be sure to check out Built to Scale HQ. That's where the Built to Scale podcast is housed. There's also support and training and everything you need there if you want more content just like this. Okay, let's dive in. And let me tell you why this is on my mind. So yesterday, I had a conversation with a uh, business owner. And he started his business about five years ago. And in that time, he has seen fantastic growth. So he has gone literally from zero, because that's where we start at zero to 2.6 million in revenue this past year with a lot of that growth happening in the past year. So think about this. He started his business like what, a year before the pandemic, two years before the pandemic, and then has grown from zero to $2.6 million in that time. We're talking about his growth. And I asked him, what do you think has contributed the most to your growth? And the very first thing, no hesitation, he said, culture, 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 culture. And we dove into that a little bit more. And while I think culture did actually play into his growth, what I was really hearing from him was that he, um, well, two things. Okay, so there are two things that really stood out. Number one is that culture was so important to him because he was passionate about it. There was a lot of passion for him behind why he ran his company the way he did. So he had a corporate job and he was frustrated with the way that he and the people in his industry were treated by the industry, not necessarily his bosses, but by the industry, the way it was set up. And he felt that it was constraining. And so he said, you know what, I want to start my own business, one, to be free for myself, but two, to provide a place where my fellow practitioners can come and they can experience the same type of freedom. So number one, there was a ton of passion behind what he brought to the table, right? Which passion always leads to more activity, more uh, influence, right? More powerful marketing messages. So passion was really a strong uh, theme there. And then number two, is that what he was doing allowed his team and his staff and himself to perform the the deliverables differently. They were different, right? Because of the culture, it allowed them to be different. The, The actual product that they put together in the long run is comparable to anybody else, right? Like, uh, they do it one way, you go to a competitor, you're going to get something very similar. Maybe it'll look different or maybe, you know, they're in the services industry. I'm trying not to give away uh, the farm. Uh, listen to the podcast and, and maybe you'll be able to, to figure out who I'm talking about. Uh, but, you know, he, he, he was very similar to his competitors, but the way they function and the way they deliver that product, very different. And so what it came down to is that because they were different, Uh, People would look at him and say, wow, I really like the way you guys do this. So I want to work with you. Or they would say, I really don't like the way that you do this. I don't want to work with you. And honestly, both things are really essential or important if you're wanting to grow your business. So passion and being different is what led to this great success in this company and this rapid growth. And so the question that I pose to you is, does your business culture hurt? or help your sales. And really, if we really want to take this down and talk about, you know, how do we quantify that? Is your business culture having you fit in with the way everyone else is doing it? Because you have to be different in order to stand out. You know, there's uh, there's lots of people that have talked about this. One book in particular that's coming to mind is uh, Mike Michalowicz, Get Different, right? And, uh, he wrote that book, and it's all about being different in the marketplace. And one of the things he says is, better is not better. The best is not better. Different is better. And if we look at this in terms of like an example, right? Let's say you have a bunch of fruit on the table. They're all apples. Apple, 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 apple. And then you have a banana. 
Which one stands out to you? Which one are you going to gravitate to? Which one are you going to look at? If nothing else, you're going to remember there's a banana on that table with all these apples. You, you know, let's take this to uh, another step. Let's say there's a ton of apples. They're all red. And then there's one green. Which apple is going to stand out to you, right? The different now. Okay. So, so let's take that. Let's take that analogy a little further because uh, let's say they're all Honeycrisp and one Granny Smith. Uh, I love Honeycrisp apples. They're sweet. They're like yellowish, right? They're good. Granny Smith bright green. They stand out, visually appealing. I hate them. <laughs> They're gross. They're sour. My kids love them. I don't know why. I hate them. They're gross. But I'm going to remember and I'm going to look at that Granny Smith apple and look look at that. Uh, to me, it repels me. I don't want to touch it. To my kids, they want it. They see that green. They're like, yes, give me the Granny Smith apple. I love it. Right? That's what you want people to do with your business and your offer, right? You want to repel those people who are a bad fit and attract the people who are going to be in love with your offer. And you do that by standing out. So you can use your company culture. Again, you can do this as a solo pro. You can do this with a team, but you want to build a company culture that rewards and encourages you being different and standing out in the marketplace. And it doesn't have to be huge things. Right? It can be little small things. Uh, let's give an example like this show, right? So when I was developing the idea around outside marketing, I was working with my producer and we were talking about it. And I said, you know what? Everyone doing a live show is sitting in their office and it's just the talking head and everyone's just seeing that and flying past it, right? So I want to do something different. So what did we come up with? We came up with, hey, Craig, why don't you go outside and why don't you exercise? And that's going to be different. So here I am with my kettlebells and my exercise. That's the crisscross routine, right, that I, I uh, put together off of Simon Watterson's book. And, um, and it's different, right? So what's the similarities between my and my other shows? I'm talking business. I'm talking marketing. Uh, I'm talking to you. It's a live show. It's daily. It's consistent. All those things are the same, but there's one thing different. We're talking about balance in your life and I'm outside one thing different. And there's going to be some people that look at that and they say, Holy cow, he's outside. What's he doing? He's walking around. What's he doing on LinkedIn, walking around outside and they're going to be attracted to it. And there's going to be other people that say, Oh, a balanced life. That's a good, you know, there's not very many people talking about how do I grow an uber successful business? How do I reach a seven figure level business without sacrificing my family time, my hobbies, my, my marriage, my life. Like, there's not very many people talking about those things. So by being just a little bit different while doing a lot of the stuff similar, I can stand out from the crowd. So the same thing for you. How do you use your company culture to set yourself out and apart from the crowd? I'd love to hear that in the comments. If you've got an answer to that, put that there. Otherwise, that's all I got for you today. So take some fast focus, imperfect action. I believe in you. I got your back. And we will talk tomorrow. And while we say goodbye, take a look at the wonderful landscape. You know, it's actually, I, I know I'm wrapping up. I should be ending. But it is kind of a rainy, overcast day, which is miserable for working out. I'm freezing cold. But uh, I've seen a herd of deer today. I've seen turkeys. I've seen a hawk. It's the perfect temperature, perfect weather for the wildlife to come out. And uh, I've really been enjoying that. So if you haven't gotten outside today, go enjoy some nature, guys. It's good for the soul. Okay, we'll talk soon. See ya. Thanks for joining us. To check out all the Built to Scale episodes and to see how Craig can help you in your business, go to builttoscalehq.com.